and you're listening to a Token Nerd Network podcast. Three, two, one... Where we ramble on about geeky things, things ranging from Batman to pop figures to Star Wars, from Token Nerd Podcast, stay spicy my friends. Hey everybody, welcome to the Token Nerd Podcast, where we ramble on about geeky things ranging from Batman to pop figures to Star Wars. I'm your host, Anthony Pettiford, and again, returning with me uh, to co-host another episode is Ben Pierce from the UVD Weekly Wrap-Up. How are you, Ben? I'm good! I, 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 you said you were going to do that. I really thought it would be later in the episode. <laughs> I don't mean to disappoint you, but I'm going to do it at random points. Okay. Um, so, welcome to 2018. How, how are you feeling? I know we just sat and watched an episode of Black Mirror before this episode, so uh, let's re-catch up. In, uh... Well, in 2018, I still feel 31, so. Oh, good. Uh, I am now 27, I and... think. And engaged. Engaged. And engaged. So, you want to hear something fun? I would so, love to. Okay. So, uh, as of right now... Uh, before we did this episode, um, Abby, my fiance, just got home from work. Fiance, fiance, uh, took it, took a shower, and when she took her shower, she uh, left this engagement ring on oh. the kitchen or on the bathroom sink. So I thought I'd just pick it up. Uh, so we'll wait and see how long before she bangs on this door, freaking out, thinking she lost it. Uh, even though I'm 27, I still have a. Uh, personality of a 13 year old who feels like pulling pranks so <laughs> a marriage built on deception what are you batman? a marriage a marriage built on fun <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what are you batman <laughs> i wish um but no so uh let's so we'll recap so as of 2017 you're or not 2017 18. 2018 we start the year you're a father i'm engaged um yeah, and apparently our world is going to shit. Uh, there are missile, <laughs> missile threats. False uh, missile threats. False missile threats. Uh, sexual allegations of a ninety-something-year-old man, uh, and, and several others. And, and, and several. And a brown others. comedian just cannot catch a break. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently, uh, uh, countries like Wakanda, Wakanda are, are shit shithole countries. Um, with that being said, we are not sponsored by this uh, this person I want to mention, um, but SuperheroStuff.com. Uh, they actually just released that they are doing a new sh- uh, T-shirt. Um, it's called Not a Shithole Country, uh, and it's for pre-order, and it's the country of Wakanda, and it says Wakanda is not a shithole country. Excuse me. All of the profits go to um, Aid for Africa on AidForAfrica.com, and you can start pre-ordering now. And then shipping begins January twenty-third. So we're gonna put a link in this description, and then we're also gonna post a couple of those on uh, the Token Nerd uh, social media pages. While we're talking about Black Panther, did you hear about the guy from New York City? No. That uh, pretty much did like a GoFundMe so that a bunch of inner-city kids could see Black Panther. No, that's cool. I did not know about that. So I think he was given enough money when I last looked to get like 200 tickets. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's that's really cool. Um, I, I do like to hear stories like that. Um, actually, so I heard another story. Like I was like browsing through Facebook, and um, one of the stories I saw was one of those guys who said that he had gotten a Facebook message um, from a someone. I forget what country it was, um, but it was just some African country. Nigeria. And, no, is he a Nigerian Liberia. Prince? I think it was Liberia. No, anyway, so it started with an L. Um, basically, he was saying that he just needed money. Uh, what can you do? Can you send him money? And the guy said, "How about this? I will pay you for taking pictures. You can take pictures, send them to me, and I'll pay you for them." And so the guy took these really crappy pictures, and he said it looked like he took them on like a weird flip phone. So he said, "You know what?" I'll just, I'm bored. I'll see where this takes me. So he bought a $30 camera, got the address, shipped it to this guy, and lo and behold, actual pictures from Africa started coming up. And he said, okay, well, they're bad and blurry. Take better pictures. Use better lighting. And then over the next couple weeks, he got these incredible pictures. 
And then he decided to make a book, and they made it go uh, a Kickstarter account for it. And they were making this book, and you know, he ma- said, "How about this? We'll make this book of all the, you know, all the pictures that you take for me, and then the pro- the proceeds will split down the middle. Um, you take yours, and then I'll take fifty percent." And so, what came comes to find out, it made they sold thousands of copies of this. The GoFundMe was huge. Um, and then the guy said, how about this? You know, with your money, we'll buy stuff for the, for the community that I live in. And they, and I'm, I'm an emotional person. So I'm watching this video and they said, okay, what are you going to do with this? Like several thousand dollars that you got. And he said, well, we'll go buy backpacks for all the kids in the schools and we'll buy chairs for the schools. And so there's one picture of him and I got all weird about it, but he had this taxi cause he, he the the store was far from where he lived and this taxi is filled to the brim with backpacks that he had bought for all the boys and girls at the school and i'm tr- trying to be an adult like, oh god ugly crying so, yeah, ugly crying absolutely ugly crying um and it, it was just a really cool story so just kind of on on that you never know uh i don't know you you never know but most of the time if someone claims to be a prince from ethiopia or liberia Take it with a grain of salt. Except Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Except Eddie Murphy, exactly. Um, y- you want to meet a king like that. So uh, kind of how we've been doing our last couple episodes, we don't really have a script. We kind of just wing it. Um, so I think we'll just uh, we'll just wing it. We, we're, we're one beer in. I think that's kind of where we're going to settle because the snow is really bad here in our neck of the woods. Uh, but we'll just kind of go over a couple of topics. Actually, let's do a quick PSA. How about that? Go for it. All right. So, um, yes means yes. That's not what we're going to talk about. (laughs) Our, uh, our PSA is to, um, talk about that shirt you're wearing. Do you clean it? Yes. Uh, what do you clean it with? And do you clean it in in a sink? Do you clean it? How do you, how do you clean that shirt? I clean it with a washboard down by the river. Okay. Well, so for us people living in a more current time, I have a crappy community uh, laundry room that I have to use. And a laundry use machine. Tide, tide pods in. Okay. Yeah. What well, way to take my legs out from underneath me? I use a Tide pod. You know why? Because it's easy for detergent and my softener and all my needs. I, I hear it's easy to eat as well. Mm. So just to let you know, and, and for all those viewers out there, Tide pods... Oddly enough, taste delicious. <laughs> they're for cleaning, come to find out, and that's their only use. <coughs> um, so I thought it was kind of funny because you have a child now. I do. And so all of these like safety concerns are built towards your child and you, a parent who has a small child coming up so that child doesn't eat these things. That's what our, our, these, these guidelines and these like security locks are for. Now we have to worry about dumbass 13 and, and, and plus year olds who do not realize that you shouldn't take a bite out of a Tide Pod. And just to kind of quickly go over <laughs> these stupid things that happen, detergent pods, uh, let's see, um, if you take a bite out of one, it can lead to choking, coughing, trouble breathing, coma, and possibly death. Uh, they can also irritate your skin and bring your eyes. But yeah, those are just a couple of the things. Um, I had a whole PSA that I had written out that I was going to post for a class because I am now going back to school. uh, Oh, do tell. Yeah, I'm going uh, to Sinclair Community College here in Dayton, Ohio. Um, Because uh, finding a job in this world is kind of weird. And uh, you know what? Forget it. I'll just tell the story. Why not? Uh, So my future sister-in-law got married this summer um and uh her reception was in florida and new smyrna and so that's where we went shark attack capital of the world yeah oh don't worry i have another story about that one uh and so i we went to so after her reception everything uh abby and i and then her other sister and her niece and nephew or my future niece and nephew we all went to disney world as chippendale at, we we went as Chip and Gadget because we went during the Mickey not so scary Halloween party, which was I, a blast. I would have preferred Mickey Fantasia in the broom, but thank, thank you. I know you're just saying that now because you're trying to trigger me, but absolutely, I think that's what should have happened. Um, but no, so we. Um... <laughs> Do you want to hear a different trigger? Mm-hmm. Eric and Ariel. 
Oh, forget you. <laughs> I absolutely forget you. Um, I wish I never told you anything. <laughs> um, but no, so uh, we were down there, and uh, when I, all through high school, my goal was I wanted to go to school. I wanted to work on animation. I wanted to work on a Disney Pixar movie or a Disney animated series. I've, m one of my life goals is to work, be uh, somehow a part of a, a Disney project or to somehow be a part of a Batman related project. If that's even a crap, uh, even like the uh, Batman, Brave and the Bold cross, uh, Scooby Doo crossover, I would love to work on. And so uh, after going to Disney, it re sparked my that inspiration and, and drive I had. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go back to school because really you can only get into these internships by being in school. Um, they don't, and I don't have the background. I, w I got graphic, I had a graphic design degree or a bachelor's degree from, from Wilmington College and it just didn't, didn't do what I needed to do. So um, other than put you into debt. Somewhere around those lines. Um, so not, not, not to, not to attack the school for anything, but, for what I needed, it, it just didn't help me with. And so, uh, and Sinclair is, is pretty advanced for, you know, for this area and everything. And, and there's already talk of Disney internships and um, Warner Brother animation internships. And already in my first two weeks and that kind of conversation is already happening. So that's, it's very promising and it's very exciting. Um, uh, <laughs> But with that being said, just to jump back one more time, you said when I mentioned New Smyrna, you said it is the uh, shark bite capital of the world. Yes, I did. Oh, I just dropped my phone. Yet um, again. Yeah, again. So I didn't know that. So at one point, we're walking around with the uh, with uh, Abby's sister and her husband, new husband, uh, her sister's new husband, and we're walking around. Uh, we went to this this cove to look for manatees, and we ended up walking like we went on this path, right? And it goes off in the woods. And at one point, he said, uh, "Her husband said, you know, we, let's turn around." And I said, "Why?" And he's like, "Well, there are panther tracks here. We should probably just head back." I said, "What?" And he's like, "Oh, there are panther tracks." He's like, y and "They're not exactly afraid of us." And I and it hit me that. He was no longer like joking with me. He was more like, "We need to go back now." So my heart's starting to race, and I'm like, "Okay." And so we're walking back, and I'm kind of being like goofy and, and joking around about being scared. And he said, "Okay, well, how about this? Can you just walk not near those like because there's like tree branches that are down?" He said, "Don't really mess with those, and don't step on them too, like you know, just willy nilly." And I was like, "Why?" And he's like, "Well, they're you know." There might be cobras underneath it. What? What? Or rattlesnakes? That was not cobras. Rattlesnakes. Or and even an anaconda. See. Or python. That's another thing. The, yeah. So what I'm learning is that everything in this in that state wants to kill you. Um, it's like a baby Australia. So the next thing we do, and it's I wish I had more pictures, but I didn't take my phone because I would have dropped it in the ocean. But we went kayaking with dolphins. And it was an absolutely amazing experience. I mean, they came right up to the to the kayaks. Um, it was absolutely amazing. But I was like putting my hand in the water and everything, and you know, had a great time. Absolutely great time. There's a place called Chicken Island where we were going, and so we ki uh, kayaked up to it. And I remember asking the lady, like, "Are there actual chickens on there?" And she said, "Oh no, you know, they're like stuffed chickens that people put up there to be funny." She said, "You can go see them, take pictures, but don't go too deep into the island." because there are rattlesnakes, a lot of rattlesnakes on this island. And so I don't, at least to my knowledge, I don't ever really, we and Abby bicker, but I never get angry, angry at her. Um, well, we, we, she got off her kayak, went onto the island, and I went on the island with her, and we took a picture, and she just kept going deeper and deeper. I mean, I was so stressed out and angry. Like, I was like, get in your kayak. Like, we got, like, I just could see her getting bit. And, you know, they told us, like, with, there's no uh, anti venom in this area. So, you get bit, you have to be helicoptered, like, I think it's 45 minutes to an hour to another hospital. And then at that hospital, they give you the anti venom. But by that point, no matter what, you're probably going to lose several toes or your foot altogether. 
And I'm just like, this is absolutely nuts. And so after we're done kayaking, which I said was a blast, except for that little chicken island episode, um, we then went to the beach, which was near where our, we were Airbnb'd, and uh, we got off. We swam in the beach for a while. It was fun. Got to see the ocean again. And then that was it. And we were sitting there talking, having dinner. And her, uh, Abby's sister's husband says, oh, yeah, you guys went in the ocean? He said, I, I don't get in the ocean anymore. I said, why? He's like, you couldn't pay me to do that. I said, why? He said, there are a lot of sharks out there. He's like, there's a lot of alligators out there. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, that cove you were kayaking in? It's like, there are tons of sharks in there. I'm like, Ugh! <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden it all hit me like, Abby had told them not to tell me anything because they said I wouldn't do it. And you know what? Daggone Skippy, I wouldn't have done it. Like now I'm, I think back to it and I'm freaking out because it's like there, there was a point where you saw a dolphin and I was like, it could have been a shark. could have been Jaws. We actually recently watched uh, 45 Meters, I think that's what it was. Yeah. It, it's terribly awful. Uh, it, but in a, such a great way. Such a great way. The ending of that movie the twist at the ending of that movie is worth everything is worth the whole, the whole movie. If, uh, if you have time and doing your fatherly duties, it's on Netflix. Okay. 45 meters. To, actually, please try to watch it before we, we, before we, we'll do a podcast just about it. a full review, spoiler review of 45 meters down. All right. All right. Were you aware? That in the state of Florida, it's either a state or federal offense to interrupt manatees while they're copulating. Yes, actually, I, I did know that because um, the uh, we were talking about how, I guess, when they one has sex, like, they all, like, just them having sex attracts others to it. And sometimes tourists will see it happening, they'll think they're fighting or something, and will kayak over and they'll get knocked off their kayaks and smothered underneath all that manatee loving. And it's like, how do you, do you put that on the tombstone? Do you put that in the obituary? Yeah, here lies John. He <laughs> smothered under two sweaty manatees that go on at each other. <clears throat> but yeah, no, I, uh, I did know that. But apparently it happens quite often. Um, they said that they actually, they flip you more than like, alligators or yeah. anything else like anything else out in the ocean in that area nuts absolutely nuts um but let's see let's so uh, uh let's go over a, a couple of the topics that i had i had jotted down uh and then we'll get your opinion on them so uh one of the first things i'll ask you is uh remember when we did our halloween episode and i told you i was a huge halloween fan yes all right well john carpenter's halloween Apparently, this was announced a while ago, and I didn't know about this until a couple days ago. They're making a re uh, not a reboot, but a sequel to it. Is this going to have Jamie Lee Curtis? In yes, it? it is. It's going to have Jamie Lee Curtis, and it's going to have um, it's going to have the uh, Nick Castle return as Michael Myers. I prefer Frank Castle. <laughs> Wouldn't that? Be uh, never mind. I, I, I want to do an impression, but it's going to be awful. So, uh, but no, they're going to do a whole thing. And then Virginia Gardner, who is from Runaways. Have you watched any of the Runaways yet? No. Oh, my. Do you have Hulu? I discovered that we do somehow. Oh, dude. I, I didn't know that we did, you but have, apparently we do. You have to watch the Runaways. It's so, so good. I've been watching the Fox version of it. The Fox version? Yeah, it's like Gifted or whatever it is. Oh, don't watch I, I haven't watched Gifted. Watch Runaways. Runaways is is spectacular. Um, wow, I really broke that that spe Spe spectacular. Spectacular. Um, no. Uh, spectacular. Uh, <laughs> all right, there's number two. Um, but no, so uh, there. This movie is coming to theaters this year, October nineteenth. We will have a brand new. Uh, Halloween sequel that will that will be in the timeline of the originals. So it's not a remake; it's a sequel, and Jamie Lee Curtis will be a part of it as long uh, along with Nick Castle and then several others to kind of continue the story of this masked slasher. With enough time having passed, Jamie Lee Curtis is going to be carrying around her Activia, <laughs> so that she can be surprised, surprised every time Michael Myers pops out. Yeah. Um, so what, what are your thoughts? Are, are you, 
were you a big Halloween person or you not care? I only watched the first one. Okay. So not like, what was it, the, the season, Night of the Witch or Season of the Witch or something like that? I only, uh, yeah, I only watched the first one. I didn't watch like all five or however many there are. Yeah, there were a lot. Um, I don't know. I was, did you ever watch the other, like um, Friday the 13th or anything like that? Um, maybe just, maybe just the first one. I, I never watched, I don't know. I was just never a big fan of Friday the 13th. I love, well, as I got older, I loved uh, Halloween. Just And if, if you want to know why, if you want to hear our, our in-depth discussion about uh, the Halloween movies, listen to our Halloween episode, uh, which is only, I think, three episodes ago. Because we, we really broke this, this podcast down to, like, holidays. Um, is this one MLK? Or? Yeah, this is our MLK episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's every holiday. I feel underprepared because we're not uh, equally represented. Oh, we're not in our discussion. No, we're not. None of this is. Um, uh, another little topic is how about this little phrase? Uh, Funko uh, finds a way to ruin all your childhood favorites. No, to acquire a license to. Everything. It has just released um, concept art for a Jurassic Park Funko series. Uh, this series will include the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Velociraptor, the Diliosaurus. Diliof- it's the one with the little like gecko thing that mm-hmm. killed Ned. Um, uh, Dr. Alan Grant, um, Dr. Ian Melkin, Jeff Goldblum for those of you, uh, and then Dennis Neddy, uh, Nedry, uh, and then John Hammond would be the other one. And there will be an Ellie Slater uh, Saddler uh, in a Jurassic Park Jeep rider that will be coming out. So that will be really cool. Um, what about the poor guy that died on the toilet? No. That would be funny <laughs> if, if there was a rider for just him and it was <laughs> the T-Rex eating him. Because uh, they're now doing poses. There's like action Funkos now. Uh, or, or Funko scenes. I think that's what they're calling them. Right now, so they're coming out with those. So by that last comment, it doesn't sound like you're very pro Funko. That's gonna be damaging to this friendship, which is equally as damaging as uh, someone and his fiance hurting my wife's heart with uh, their Z- Zoe De Chanel commentary. Okay, <laughs> she is soulless. Let's let's talk about it. soulless. Has the eyes of an evil lemur. Two evil lemur. Two or not, number three. Five hundred days of summer is an awful movie. How could you hate on Jovi from Elf? Because even in that movie, she was dr- she was dull, absolutely dull. I I cannot. I, I no, I just, I can't stand her. She's one of my least favorite people. Um, you know how a lot of people have a lot of hate for Anne Hathaway, and I do too. Um, but Zoe Deschanel is on there, and I hate Five Hundred Days of Summer. It was just, I I could not stand it. Probably because I got I was getting dumped at the time, and the girl I was well, dating this at the is time just an associate- dragged out. No, she dragged out the dumping process, and we, she made me watch that movie. And that movie was her hint to me that we were breaking up. So you know what? Screw Five Hundred Days of Summer. This is just association <laughs> issues. It also was a bad movie. But that all uh, so had you a, had a you great have, moment. It you gave have me a no great moment because for an, me for an Asian and my future, in the it, me and my future wife had a moment where we said, "You know what, <laughs> Zoe Deschanel sucks," and we can agree on it together. Uh, you know, if, if she doesn't leave me because I stole the ring. Uh, if we had a video, it'd be a lot funnier. So another thing we were gonna do is we were gonna. This was our first video episode, um, but because it's so freaking cold here in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, my trunk is frozen shut, and I tried to open it, and I think I tore or popped something in my back. So, do your rear seats not fold down? Uh, mine do not. It is supposed to. Some I feel like it's happened before, but I could I've never been able to do it since, or I've never done it. I I feel like it should be able to open from the back, but I can't. I don't know where. I just I don't know. Okay. Uh, so no no so so with the answer so are you are you pro or anti Funko because I do want to point out that for my birthday I got the Hulk Gladiator Hulk Funko bobblehead pop that's just playing to the audience ah gotcha I see that's what you did there <laughs> I just had to play to the strength of my audience right now so 
Whatever. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll move on to that next little piece. Um. Let's see. We'll not talk about Shazam right now. We'll talk about Kazam with Sinbad as a genie. <laughs> no. Uh, Sinbad. You mean Shaq? No. There's the uh whole uh, that effect like the the Berenstain Bears versus the Berenstain Bears where uh-huh. people swear Sinbad was in a genie movie as well that never existed. I. I feel like you're no. I feel like he wasn't a genie movie. He never was. Really? Never was. What I, <laughs> I feel like I remember him being in one, but I guess I'd have to look that up. Um, but no, the it's, this, it's called the Mand- the Mandela effect. God, I could have swore I, 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 I can almost see it, but I'm I'm thinking of Kazam. It's like the Berenstain versus the Berenstain yeah. Bears, where. One never existed, even though people swear up and down that it's mm-hmm. Berenstein. And so it's the proof of an alternate dimension or alternate reality that we are aware of. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, so I I didn't get really I didn't get a chance to really look into this topic. I just I was skimming through uh, comicbooknews.com and or uh, yeah, comicbook. I think it is comicbooknews.com. Uh, anyway, so the comicmovie.com, sorry. Anyway, so what I was looking at their website is there was an article about a Star Wars The Last Jedi cut that a, let's see if I can just read it for you, an anonymous Pirate Bay user has uploaded a fan edit of Star Wars The Last Jedi. Um, the edit has been removed, any scenes, or the edit has edited down and removed any scenes featuring female characters. This version is known as The Last Jedi Defeminized fan edit. <laughs> it's described by this delusional creator. Um, basically, the last Jedi minus girl power um, and other silly stuff. This, so I don't, I don't get it. So how does this even make sense? Like the story follows Ray. I mean, it has. Well, okay, I forgot you haven't seen it. I was about to say this is kind of lost on me when yeah. I haven't seen the movie. Okay, well, I mean, it's there are female characters. Obviously. How, how are you gonna cut out a do a? Pr- Let's see this this manist movement is the reason that we can't have any actual conversation. What about General Orgonia? Is she considered a woman, or is she just transcending femininity, masculinity, uh, and is just see. Princess kind of General Leia? Okay. It, this is just okay. This should might as well just be Star Wars, the alt right Jedi. Okay, this is this is stupid. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to bring this up because this will spoil things for you. I would love to get into this on on why they. <laughs> I'll see the movie eventually. I know. I'm, I'm I, know gonna, I know. I know. I know. You'll see it. I don't want to stifle what you're gonna what no, you want to say. No, so. no. It's, it's, I'm just reading this, and it's it's just they're calling themselves the Manist. Okay. The, they they cut things out that they felt were silly, and anything that produced women. So, so your little this manist the, the manist group, the great manist party, if you will. So their the, whole, man, the manatees. Yeah, that's what they say. So so this this group of circle jerks basically are are so threatened by women that they and other things. So I'm sorry, Star Star Wars is a silly concept. It is silly. Like it's cool, but it's also silly. I mean, I, I'm saying that with two fan-made lightsabers next to me, and oh yeah, and, and two droids with with Oswald the Rabbit hats on, but and a Chewie and a Porg Funko Pop figure over there. Okay, there's a lot of Star Wars stuff in this room, but it is silly, and this these people are gonna take it so seriously and do their super serious cut. Okay, screw you guys. Uh, apparently, Ron Johnson, uh, Ryan Johnson, the director, responded with a uh, Facebook post. Or a, a Twitter tweet, and uh, what else would you do on Twitter? I know, I'm, I, I, I know, but anyway, he he basically made fun of them about it. Um, we'll come back to this. Like once once you see the movie, we'll we'll go back and we'll. It'll probably be on Blu-ray unless someone takes me to the movie. How about this? We'll see what will come first. Will Abby meet your son, or will you see Star Wars: The Last Jedi first? I thought we were gonna see. Am I gonna see Black Panther first? Or yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so, uh, okay, speaking of Star Wars, we'll talk about Solo. 
Okay. Solo, A Star Wars Story is the next installment in the Star Wars story. Uh, we are four months away from the release of this movie. Does, is this the one that has Childish Gambino in it? Yes, it is. Playing Lando Calrissian. The traitor. Uh, okay. Um, so anyway, uh, they just released a synopsis on StarWars.com. I think it's just looking to make sure I get the reference right. StarWars.com. Um, so anyway, basically this synopsis is everything we already know, but it's something to wet the whistle. Uh, the synopsis goes, board the Millennium Falcon and journey to a galaxy far, far away in Solo, a Star Wars story, an all new adventure with the most beloved scoundrel in the galaxy. Through a series of daring escapades deep within the dark, dangerous criminal underworld, Han Solo meets his mighty future co-pilot Chewbacca and encounters the notorious gambler Lando Calrissian in a journey that will set course one of the Star Wars saga's most unlikely heroes. That's it. <laughs> I mean... I I feel like I could have written that like when they announced that they were doing a Star Wars movie or a Han Solo movie. <laughs> I just love that this was enough to so, be an article. As online. a scoundrel, do you mm-hmm. think uh, Mr. Solo is a scruffy nerf herder? A scruffy nerf herder is like, hey babe, my place or yours. I got a giant ship to a. Uh... <laughs> She's such a face. Yeah, nasty nerf herder. Um. <laughs> Uh, cheese and crackers. All about consent, kids. Oof. No, we we said <laughs> no. We're not we're not gonna delve into that one because we that could end up being a long long conversation. Uh, we'll skip that and go over to Incredibles two. Were you a fan of Incredibles? <laughs> no, we're just gonna drop no, it. I, I was gonna I was, I was gonna go a different way. Except no. I knew you. The answer was gonna be no, but it's a yes. I was gonna ask if you watched the college football playoff game I did. in in order to watch the Black Panther. I Each didn't. Featurette. I didn't. I didn't see the featurette either. I saw the new trailer for Black Panther, and it it just looks. I know there are some people already, and and let's be honest, racism is a very real thing. There are people who are not going to see this movie because, whatever stupid reason, but Black Panther looks so good. I mean, because this is the first. For the most part, this is the first Marvel character that we weren't introduced to in a solo movie. Um, I, 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 I realize this is a terrible segue, and I'm cutting you off. Uh-huh. But speaking of Black, Black Widow is, I thought, getting uh, its script written. I Okay, so... Or at least they hired a writer, Yeah, what it sounded like. I don't care for Black Widow, a Black Widow movie. I don't see it being interesting, honestly. Says the person who wants a cyborg move. No, no, okay, listen, <laughs> stop for a second. No, we're going to talk about Black Widow, which it's, it's a, it would be a, a spy movie, okay? One, it would have to... I, they were talking about it being like, there would be like the female Avengers movie where you have um, uh, Valkyrie... From Thor Ragnarok, you have uh, Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel, uh, or Captain Marvel. She's not Ms. Marvel. We have to make sure we correct that. Um, and uh, Gamora, I said. I, somehow they're going to add Gamora to it, but like, all the female characters are in there one, like in a movie together. That sounds cool to me. Um, but I'm also someone who would rather have... I'm excited for Captain Marvel. I'd be excited if they... because. Uh, what, what about Squirrel Girl? I could even no, no maybe a TV show, but I, I couldn't get behind a movie. What I mean, so I I just don't see Black pa- or Black Widow being an interesting movie for me. It, it just seems like if it was a Black Widow Hawkeye movie, yes, but Black Widow is not someone that I feel like the character. It's because even her comic book was boring. Her comic title is she just isn't someone who can carry a title on her own. Um, Excuse me. Add someone else to it. Maybe if it was a Black Widow and it featured Captain America in it, then that would be interesting. With her being the lead, just like how she was the she was basically his his support in uh, Winter Soldier. If they switched it and he was just her support in a Black Widow movie, then yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Wasn't she introduced in Iron Man too, though? Oh yeah, she was. So Black Panther is not the only one. So yeah, she was. Uh, she was introduced in. It. I guess Hawkeye was too. Vision. 
Yeah, they're not new as it's so original after all. Um, but none of them are getting their own movie. Anyway, so um, side side question. Uh, I found I found the ring. Are uh, Nick Cannon and Michael B. Jordan allowed to be in the same place at the same time? Nick Cannon? What's Nick Cannon in? Nothing, but they look like the exact same person. Uh huh. I asked, are they allowed to be in the same place at the same time? Like, would they be allowed to be in Black Panther? So, so Abby just walked in. My beautiful fiance just walked into the room. Hey, Abby, how are you? I'm a little upset. You want to talk to the mic? No, I, I don't. She, she's distressed that she probably thought she lost her ring. Oh. Definitely thought it was gone. And I uh, asked oh. you if you knew where it was, and you said, no, I didn't touch it. Uh oh. So I tore through the garbage and I went out. You went to the garbage? And I looked in the trash panda. I looked in the snow because I thought maybe it fell off. She probably doesn't want to listen to the beginning of this episode where you admit. Ben, shut up. (laughs) You admit that you took it? I had this whole bit planned out. I did. I didn't. We're going to go to commercial break right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to listen to a word from our sponsor and talk about Tenacious Toys. Hey, everyone. This is Travis Likens from Token Nerd Podcast, and I'm here today to tell you something about sponsorship. That's right. Token Nerd now has a sponsor. The fine folks at TenaciousToys.com, your source for designer toys, pop vinyl, original art, and more, are now our sponsor. And guess what? As a part of that... You can get 10% off your next order at TenaciousToys.com by entering the code TOKEN10 at checkout. That's right, 10% off. And not only are they giving you this code, they're also going to be sponsoring many of our Token Nerd giveaways in the next coming months. So make sure to follow us at Token underscore Nerd on Instagram to catch our latest giveaways. Hey everybody, welcome to the Token Nerd Podcast, where we ramble on about geeky things ranging from Batman to pop figures to Star Wars. I'm Anthony Pettiford. And I'm Travis Likens. We get it. We're here. Episode 22. Deuces. Deuces, deuces. <laughs> it's, I think it's like Ventidos. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, ninth grade was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but I want to... We're back. And we're back. Um, I may or may not be engaged. <laughs> um, I just had a... A, a weird my voodoo wiccan uh fiance just threw a worry is it a worry doll is that what she called it i have no idea what yeah i was kind of kind of struggling on my own um but no so i got a worry doll thrown at me because uh that little the little bit that i thought i was gonna be so funny with um really just backfired in real time <laughs> um so the topic <laughs> <laughs> the, the topic we were going to next i think we were uh i was I was uh, trying to figure out whether Michael B. Jordan and Nick oh. Cannon could be in the same uh, in the same area without Nick being Cannon's confused. not gonna isn't in Black Panther, but they look like the exact same. Person. Oh, okay, that was your okay. I was gonna say I was like I don't think they're in this. It, Nick Cannon's not in this movie, um, but now I get yeah they do look a lot alike. I like Michael B. Jordan. Are I you all, sure it's not Nick Cannon? <laughs> uh, I am not sure if. From what I've seen, if I like Nick or <laughs> shoot, <laughs> if I, I like there. Michael B. Jordan in Black Panther already, because it throws me off that everyone has this accent except for him. Like maybe it's explained. Like it'll probably like, be explained. Like Matt Damon as a Chinese person. He, but he's. Have you ever seen the movie? No. Okay, so he's not Chinese. He's just a white savior. Uh, he's oh, that, just, that makes it even better. Yeah, he's just you know the white guy who comes in to a foreign culture and does their culture better than the 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 natives do. Anyway, let's talk about the Incredibles. All right, all right. So Incredibles two is coming out. All right. Um, I believe it's either June or July eighteenth. Uh, my phone's on the floor, so I can't really look it up right now. Is Jack Jack grown up now? No, this actually takes place right at not right after, but. Just a couple days or whatever after the end of the first movie. So uh, Heat Miser is still in the movie then? Heat Miser? You mean uh, Frozone? No, Heat Miser. The, uh, the redhead that has the Heat Miser hair. Mm. I'm pretty sure he died. 
I have no idea. Yeah, no, he got sucked into an airplane turbine. He died. <laughs> you do not know that. He's a superhero of sorts. No, he's not. He was a normie. Um, but anyway, so they have released another synopsis. And so this synopsis will describe to you Incredibles 2. Are you ready, Ben? I feel like the Incredibles turns into the Fantastic Four at some point. It's it's the good Fantastic Four. No, it is. It's it's the Fantastic Four movie that we are still waiting for. Anyway, so you mean you didn't like the Jessica Alba one? I, even though there were two of them, I didn't dis. You know, it, they were not great movies, but I didn't hate them. So does this mean, with the uh, the lens of time, that you can adequately judge movies like? The early Fantastic Four, mm -hmm. the Daredevil, Spider Man, early Spider Man, Hulk. Which one? Because there were two of them. Yeah. Edward Norton or Eric Bana. Eric Bana. Then what about Edward Norton? Uh. Because one of them's canon and one of them's not. Yeah. Well, I liked the storyline for the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, that's the one with uh, Edward Norton. I believe. Anyway, I liked I liked the way they made it, but they kind of threw all of their mythos that they created into the wind when they did uh, um, Mark Ruffalo and his Hulk. But anyway, yeah, I prefer that one. I'm trying to think. Now you now you said that. What other <laughs> first Iron Man? Yeah, Iron Man. Well, because that's that's early Marvel still. It is early Marvel. You're right. Um, Captain America came in the second wave, or mm -hmm. the Thor. No. Yeah. Yeah. The, Thor the, was the Thor first was Thor was. Yeah, he was towards the just beginning. Just made but, it. Um, but it's stuff like the, the Daredevil movie, Fantastic Four. Even though Fantastic Four is Fox. Mm -hmm. I think. What else did we get? We got early X Men. Early X Men. Um. Daredevil. Or not Daredevil, um, Deadpool. You had early, early crappy Deadpool, and then you have uh, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Well, both Ryan Reynolds Deadpools. Um, but no. You mean Green Lantern? Yeah, Green Lantern. <clears throat> so uh, let, me, let me get on back on track, and I will read you the synopsis for The Incredibles 2. Uh, everyone, let me just make sure I get this correctly. <laughs> Everyone's favorite superheroes are back. The Incredibles 2. But this time, Helen, uh, voiced by Holly Hunter, uh, is now the spotlight. Is now in the spotlight, leaving Bob, Mr. Fantastic, voiced by Craig T. Nelson, at home with Violet, uh, voiced by Sarah Val, Voel, and Dashed, uh, voiced by Huck Milliner. Anyway, I'm not good with names. Anyway, uh, to navigate a day-to-day -day heroic, or to navigate the day-to-day -day heroics of normal life, slash this tough transition to everyday life. Um, but da -da -da -da, the family is still unaware of Jack Jack's emerging superpowers, but a new villain hatches a brilliant, dangerous plot. The family and Frozone, voiced by Samuel Jackson, must find a way to work together, which is easier said than done, when, uh, even when they are all incredible. Yeah, so that is... Uh, <laughs> sorry, it threw me off because it, it went off to who voiced what. But I guess in this one, uh, Mrs. Fantastic will be the main focus, and Mr. Fantastic's job will now be Mr. Dad. Oh, role reversal. Mm-hmm. A woman forward movie. Yeah, very progressive. Welcome to welcome to 2018, folks. Um, but no, so were you a fan of the original Fantastic? Not fantastic. <laughs> Shoot, Ben. Uh, the original uh, Incredibles. Incredibles. Yes, I was. Yeah, uh, it's actually my. It's it, it's a, a close tie between and for Monsters Inc. Uh, Monsters Inc. and Incredibles are the for my, Pixar. Yeah, one and two. Um, and I like Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3 is easily number three because um, it just it rips your – I actually – just a little side note. I mean, this whole podcast has been side notes. Uh, someone had posted a meme, and it was Woody saying goodbye to Andy, and it said, uh, uh, see you later, partner. Oh, you want to talk about a grown man crying in class. Whew. But, yeah. Uh, it was Shouldn't you be paying attention to these classes you're paying for? No, I, that's another thing. 
you're really good at getting me on these little tan. Uh, so anyway, um, my first time going to school, I feel like going to school, or I should. This was the time that in my life I should have gone to school. Is in my mid my mid twenties. Um, when I first went to school, my parents helped pay for it, in which like I never saw the money, like financial aid and scholarships and stuff like that. And my parents helped me pay, mostly paying for it. That's the illusion of direct deposit. It's invisible money. Yeah. Now, and I didn't, you know, if I didn't want to go to class, I would skip class, or you know, you'd party and and all this stuff. But now, as an adult, and I'm making my payments on this payment plan. I now realize that every class, every second that I'm in there, costs something, and I've, I've taken it completely differently. But I did. Uh, I had to. Um, I had to get on Facebook for something for a project. It was actually for a project, and someone had posted that meme, and of course, you know, we we're looking for pictures of you know screen addiction, screen addiction, and, and Toy Story three meme, and <laughs> just crying nonstop, and everyone's looking at me because uh, I'm. Oddly enough, the oldest person in the class. Caveat, yeah. caveat question. Uh huh. As Samuel L. Jackson doing a kid-friendly movie, do you feel there are a lot of uh, off-the-air takes where he just is yes. his, his typecasted role and he just has to get it out of his system? Hmm. As an angry black man who just yells about everything. Even though Frozone yells about everything, but he yells I... kid-friendly things, but he's like... God damn it, motherfucking snakes on a plane. I, All right, kids. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I think he would. I think he would, but I also think he had a lot of fun with the original one. Um, they actually, if you ever watched the, I have the DVD, um, or Abby has the DVD somewhere, but there are the um, the extras, and the there's one where it's commentary of an old, 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 like, you know, like, they did, like the old Batman cartoons. Mm-hmm. And there is they had someone had made an old cartoon version of uh, Mr. Fantastic and Frozone, and it was Mr. Fantastic and Frozone commentating this fake episode. And at one point he goes, because when they did the zoom in before we could do mouth animations, what they would do is they would take the image and they'd blend it and actually put a human mouth underneath it so it would talk, and they just had like the cartoon's face. And so the person who voiced uh, Mr. Uh, Frozone was a white guy. And he goes, wait, what? That's a white mouth. And it was like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is a Disney movie. Uh, I hope I can find it. I'll, uh, I'll try to post that little image on our uh, Instagram page. But, no, it's um, – I, I think he does. But I also think he had a lot of fun with this movie. I mean, they, they did a lot that no one ever saw. Okay, that was loud. Um, they did a lot that no one – no one knew. Like no one really went to the extras back in the days for those things. And they did a lot of stuff that just kind of floats there that no one really paid attention to. They built their mythos in that DVD special. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for that little topic. Um, and yeah, that actually is everything that I had written down. So we were all cut. Oh, and we were at the forty-seven minute mark. So we're at the end of our episode. Um, time flies when you're having fun, folks. Um, <laughs> and getting yelled at for stupid uh, little plots that you have. But no, um, one thing I do want to reach out and mention is uh, please pay attention if you want to get a hold of that uh, Wakanda is not a shithole t-shirt by uh, superhero.com. Uh, check that out. Like I said, I'll have the descriptions in, or uh, the, a, the link in the descriptions below. Also post about it on our social media page. Uh, we will also be doing our first giveaway of 2018. We'll be giving away an X-ray figure of Wonder Woman. Um, it is actually very... That sounds kind of uh, iffy. You know, it's progressive. It's very progressive. She's the, um, And this is in support of her getting an Oscar nom. Yeah. Uh, but no, so if you are interested, we're going to uh, keep an eye on our social media page, and we will be posting about that probably by the time this episode goes up. Um, it'll be the same rules as always, um, but you'll just find out when you have until to uh, repost and share to enter that giveaway. So, Benny Boy, the Godfather, tell me. Give me, give me some links. Where can I find you on the internets? Well, on the deep dark web. I can't go into that. 
Because this, <laughs> this is yeah, <laughs> the deep dark web. Because <laughs> this is a kid friendly show ish. Even though I uh, talked about angry black men, and then I per- proceeded to talk about motherfucking snakes on a plane. <laughs> uh, so I am BTP underscore UVD mm-hmm. on the Instagrams. I am also uh, at Urban Vinyl Daily on the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the Twitters. And I also am 50. 0.5% of a weekly show called <laughs> the uh, Urban Vinyl Daily's weekly wrap-up. Mm-hmm. 50.5%. You know... It, 55 it, or it was no, 50.5? No, I said 50.5 because it's, it's just non-committal to say that I'm 50%. Because mm-hmm. I gotcha. I, I got to boast a little bit. Mm-hmm. Got to boast. <laughs> You're a father now. It's fine. Because this is the end of the episode. Who's actually going to listen to it? <laughs> exactly. Who's actually listening to these episodes anyway? This is more therapeutic for me. As you slowly stroke your I know. That's why I stopped. <laughs> that's why I stopped. Okay. And uh, for me, you can find me on our social medias at token underscore nerd for Twitter and Instagram, and TokenNerd004 for Facebook. Uh, thanks for joining us again, folks. Uh, ben, I appreciate you coming on, as see always. See you later! I didn't even see you adjust it. <laughs> Matt. Adventures in space! All right, folks. Well, as always, I'm Anthony. I'm Ben. <laughs> Stay spicy, my friends. <laughs> <laughs>